Zwang, Zwang. Okay, everyone. Hello. Greetings from Planet Insanatron. Oh, wait. Hello, everyone. And welcome. We're going to do a big handheld marathon. Basically, everything handheld except for DS and PSP that I own. Um. We're going to have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Virtual Boy. Yes, I know, it's quite arguable. That has nothing to do with handhelds, but it was marketed that way, so bleh. And I only have two games for it, so I'm just throwing it in anyway. Um, we're also going to cover, and I'm just showing these because not as many people know them as commonly, obviously, the, ga uh, the <coughs> Neo Geo Pocket. Which uh, is a very nice looking clean system. Um, I really like the Neo Geo Pocket 2. I do have a pretty decent collection. If you if you want like a really cheap, nice handheld and a bunch of cheap games that are really good quality, get a Neo Geo Pocket. It's surprisingly cheap and you can get a good handful of a handful of games for it. Well, you know, some big graphic holders. And the other system we're going to show a few games for is the Wonder Swan. This is the color, and yes, I know it's pink. Boo-hoo on you. Uh, Crystal is the most modern version of it, but, um... And, uh... You're going to see the box for this game, so I'll show that then, but I figure I'll show you the cartridge, because it's kind of weird, because it has the chip sticking out with no cover... And it's amazing that only, if I can get, eh, if I can get the, man, battery cover for this thing is annoying. Eh, slide off. Oh, dear lord. Oh, that's why. I forgot there's a lock thing on it. <laughs> that takes only one battery. Shocking. I, I forgot I had a lock thing. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about this handheld is you can play it like a Game Boy Advance. Two buttons over here and the plus pad and all you will you crap you. But there were special games you could utilize this other pad and use all the buttons in a long screen style. And that 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 has a few interesting games on. I sadly don't own too much for it. I do want to get more for it though. Okay, so anyway, to the main show. Everyone's here to watch, uh, we'll look at a bunch of games, right? We're not here to listen to our history of some obscure um Systems, are we? We got a lot of stuff. Box stuff, loose stuff. Oh, my. Uh, these aren't going to be in particular all of the systems. Oh, and also, we're going to have Game Gear in here, too. So, we got Game Boy, Game Boy Co., Game Boy Vance, Sega Game Gear, Wonder Swans, and um, Neo Geo Pocket. So, we got a good bit to go through here. So, uh... Oh, boy. Did I get that? Yeah. Okay, I just want to check the Okay, so, uh, going through random crap. Tales Avenger. A lot of people don't like that game. Sonic 2, the Hedgehog. Who doesn't own uh, some version of that? We got a little, uh, a lot of protecting. Drillo Dozo. Golden Sun, The Lost Age, subtitle really small. Now, uh, Wobo Pawn, Wobo Pawn, Build 'em, Collect 'em, th Trash 'em, Cross Aversion. I never heard of the series, uh, when I got there, I was like, never heard of it, I'll try it. Um, well, Wallands Course 2. So 
some kind of Zelda-ish like game with passwords. Mill Gear, I mean, <laughs> why did I say Mill? Mill Slug Two, a uh, Mill Slug Second Mission, which um people who played the Neo Geo Pocket Mill Slugs will know they were more more platformy than uh, arcadeish like any of the old Mill Slugs. Azor's Dreams, and if I remember correctly, it's called Return of Azor's Dreams in uh, Japan to make it different from the PS1 version. We have the fourth Lufia title, Lufia, Lufia Returns of War. I haven't really gone to it, but it's supposed to be a little more faithful to the second game. We got our first Virtual Boy game. Virtual Boy Royal Land, which uh, is confusing to the Royal Land that's on Game Boy. Um, I can't remember what it was, but this has a different title in Japan, which was to make it um, different from that series. We got The Legend of Zelda Seasons, Oracle of Seasons, says. Um, as I said in my one Zelda contest entry thingy, um, I did buy a copy of Times one time, and it uh, it didn't work, so I never replaced. I got rid of that cartridge, and I never got um, to getting a new one, but I want to. Grand Theft Auto, no subtitle or anything. It was basically the remnants of a crappy game they were trying to develop. Didn't turn out well, but I actually did play a good chunk of it. Picture puzzle. Eh. Now, uh, this is a Japanese game here, and I don't know if it's a legitimate cartridge, because the sticker on there is kind of crooked, so it kind of threw me off. But it's called Dancing Sword, and um, it's some kind of side scroll. I remember I tried it. It's, uh, I believe it was kind of hard. I can't really remember that. I got it a long time ago. Uh, Fancy Star Collection, which is 1, 2, and 3. Harvest Moon 2 on the Game Boy Color. Now we got a horrible one here. Double Dragon 3. Can't read the subtitle because it is so horrible looking. Um, if I remember correctly, I read before that this was actually some other game and they changed it to Double Dragon. I, I can't really remember exactly, but either way, the game sucks. It sucks. Sucks. Tactics Ogre. The Knight of Lydius. So I can't number some of these subtitles off the top of my head. Metroid 2. Return of Samus. <laughs> Why do they have these subtitles so small for good sakes? Got a lot of stuff to go through. Final Fantasy 3, uh, Final Fantasy Legends 3, which would be Saga 3. Puzzle Bubble Mini. No empty case. Get some spare cases. Now, um, anyone who played Quest 64, you would probably be surprised now there was a sequel. Quest Brain, uh, Brain, Brainy's Journey, yeah, Brainy's Journey. Um, this battery and this cartridge does not work, so I can't save, so I had never really bothered to play it. Um, it always sucks when you get that. Dark Arms, Bus uh, Beast Buster 1999. This is a interesting little game. It's a kind of a RPG little shooter thing. It kind of plays like Zelda with guns. Um, and you collect souls of things you kill and powers you up and you make guns and shit. Um, really bizarre. It's supposedly a sequel to an arcade game in Japan, so I don't know much about the arcade game. Um, something I didn't like 
And I got wheel cheap for like two bucks, regardless of the price that's on it, because the person just like, yeah, you can have it for like two bucks. That the Legend of Wivel King, which is kind of like basically a spin-off idea of Harvest Moon. I, I didn't really like it. It's really old and kind of clunky, if I remember. Not my thing, but you know, Pac-Man. We always need Pac-Man, Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. The Thor, the Lufia title. Lufia, the Legend Returns. Which is kind of a 50-50 kind of thing. Um, on the one hand, it is a very generic RPG, except for one little thing. Its battle system is really bizarre. I mean, it works like a traditional RPG, but you bring in nine people that share uh, three woes. You'll have, like, three woes and three people in one each woe. One person, you have three people that go in each turn. You can go, like, you go here, and the third person this woe, and the second person this woe, and they attack. And it's, um... It's a pretty interesting concept, uh, but the music and everything is just, uh... Uh, SNK Gals, uh, Gus, oh, wait, wait, yeah, Gals, that's a star, I think, not a T, Gal Fighters, um, it has actually one male character in a dress, um, that dude with the, uh, from the S and K series, the dude with the chains on his wrists with the long red hair, he makes a cameo in a dress in that. That's kind of creepy. Dive a lot, Becky's version. Um, some some win game. Don't really get the concept of there being two versions of it. Um, from the Shimon Tensei series, Dimmy Kids Light version. It's whip off of Pokemon style. <laughs> then we have, of course, the uh, My Own Luigi Superstar Saga. Um, as I said before in my Super Nintendo video, I wasn't a big fan of that series. It's just I don't like the forced way of doing that. Yeah, Final Fantasy Legends Two. Now, um. This, uh, I have this box here. This is a, a spin-off of the Ogre Tactics series. It plays like the, um, oh, not the Ogre Tactics, well, it's part of the Ogre series. It's, uh, plays exactly like the PS1 entry of the, uh, what is it, the Queen Dark Battle or something? Eh, it's based off a song. <laughs> Getting them boards. Um, I believe the subtitle for this was, uh, Prince Zidania or something, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a guy with a Z, and, um, it, it's, it's pretty good and faithful to the PS1 game, considering the size of everything in that, and I think I'll show off the booklet in that, and see, there's the game right there, I'll show off the booklet since, um, some people might be interested in that, um, cause, uh, Hold it a little back. See, it gets uh, pretty faithful art though. It's nice colored. Get a goofy wizard and the cards in the back. It's all good. And note how um, know how this box is like a Game Boy Advance, but it just opens on the side. Uh, because um, I'm gonna show you. I have two more. These are the only three boxed. It's in uh, Neo Geo Pocket games I have, and they're all Japanese. Um, all the I, I've never seen an American one. I don't even know if they even came with boxes. I I've honestly never seen one. I heard that the system didn't do well. That but anyway, keep in mind that box because I'm going to show you that too way over here. Uh, Grandia. Um, I'm trying to number some. Uh, Purcells, I think. It's, it, I think it had some kind of weird time story or something. Uh, it was made by Hunsonsoft. Um, it would technically be the third game made in the, well, third or fourth, because then there was also a museum on the Sega Saturn. And then which one came out first. Um, 
as you saw on the NES, I had Chrysalis. I have Chrysalis on the Game Boy Color, because uh, there's a little additional story in the Game Boy Color version, so. Now, um, number the Shimitenze Bible game, number three I showed you. Sorry for hitting death still. Um, this is basically Shimitenze Bible 1. Um, it's called Revelations the Demon Slayer. And it is done by Atlas himself, so they changed the title on purpose. It's basically very medieval Dragon Quest style with all the Shimitense kind of stuff. So it's kind of corny in a way. Uh, Fist of the North Star. It's a fine game on the original Game Boy. That should tell you enough to never touch it. Seriously. It is sad that I really did pay that for that. Oh, I was such a gullible fool. I know, 14 bucks for off. Uh, King of Fighters R2. Yeah, there's a little boy there. Gotta hold it in the right position. Got so many different shape titles. Now here, if I remember correctly, this was the final at least in America, the final title released for the Neo Geo Pocket. And many of them were recalled. Uh, this is a tactics mech game. And, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Fal see it? The, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but, um, uh, it's not rare of us I'm aware of, though. But, um, something to pick up if you get a Neo Geo Pocket. Now, um, I have both versions of this. Uh, which is Card Fighters Clash. We're getting both out. There's the S it's basically a card fighter game with Capcom and S and K characters on the cards. And um, I believe there was a DS sequel. Come on, get, why won't you come out of the case? You're actually too thick. It's actually stuck in the case still. Um, they're basically the same, really looking. They just have kind of a... Eh, Different color sticker, and in the corner, it's too blurry. Uh, that second line, the blur, says Capcom, and this one will say SNK though. That's the only way to tell the difference from the two, unless you actually have. Um, I ordered the SNK version, and the person sent me the Capcom version. And I asked them about this, and they said, "Okay, we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll tell you, sorry, we'll send you." And they told me to keep this one, <laughs> because um, a lot of people aren't interested in the Geo Pocket. I don't know why. And by the way, these are fun games, too. Um, you don't need both of them, unless you have a friend who happens to have a Neo Geo Pocket, which is probably way or two, but... The system's cheap, and it has a lot of good games on it, so, you know, I, I, I really have to tell you. Pick it up. Okay. We have Ultima. Wounds of Orchard, where you basically collect, um, um, oh, what were those things, um... I can't remember. Um, if I remember correctly, Lord Bush said this was his favorite console handheld-ish game. We're not referring to his original PC uh, series, as in like with the Japanese console main games and such. Uh, Dragon Quest Monsters. I don't call them Royal. Shut up. Uh, this is the first one, and Eidos was the one who brought it to America. At the time, Enix basically gave up on us. Again. So they did that, it did pretty good, so Enix said, uh, let's give it a try. Ta-da! No introduction need. Puzzle Link 2. SD Gundam Force. Horrible game, by the way. And then, anyone who remembers watching a lot of episodes of, um... G4's, uh, um, crap, what was that show? One with Adam Cecil, um, oh, I can't remember it now, but I remember when they did, uh, the Advanced Guardian Heroes review, and I didn't pay, uh, $9.99 for this, I actually got four buck. Um, I remember it was quite hilarious, and, uh, Ronald's Course, the first one, and I, I do like the game art there. 
And that one sequel just bleh. Uh, one of the few Metal Gear games I haven't finished. Metal Gear Solid. I forgot the subtitle for it in Japan. Um, I hate when they do this shit. Well, like, um, it happened to a lot early, like, um, when a series had a game on the handhelds back in the colon Game Boy, they just called it the series as opposed to giving its own unique title a lot of times. That, that's stupid. Um, I can't remember what the subtitle, but it's definitely not Metal Gear 1. I know. Um, it's not part of the storyline, if I remember correctly, so it's its own universe now. Uh, Mega Man Battle Network 3 Blue Version. This is the only Battle Network game I've played, and it probably will remain as that, because I hate it. I got immediately lost, confused, just so Ugh. I just don't get it. Uh, Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. Now, I did pay $10 for this. Um, I don't know if this is well, but I think it is kind of hard to get your hands on, I think. Um, is technically the... I, I, I get annoyed when people say Kid Icarus never had a sequel, because technically this is a sequel. Yeah, it's not a console, and it's not as... Graphical, obviously. So anyway, uh, we'll get all these loose things put back in here. Oh boy, oh boy, boy. Eh, oh. Got lots of stuff here. We're not even halfway done. Because we got more loose stuff. <laughs> eh. But, we're going to skip ahead and go to the boxes. But before we continue on to the boxes, um... Uh, I, if you notice, I've been keeping two separate powers, and that's because, um, one power's games I've been, one power's games I have been, and, um, these are all good with games I have been, Dragon Quest 1, 2 booklet, with 5, 2, Pokemon Train Car game, Pokemon Pinball Shop, Kiss Me and Harmony of Did, Did, I can't say the end, Pokemon Gold version, Pokemon Yellow version, which has the same cover as Red and Blue, and Final Fantasy Legend, which is Saga 1. And, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, uh, I'm pretty sure I did say I really love Romancing Saga 2. My favorite games are the Widow Saga game, and for some reason there's a lot, everything's like really pink. Pink and black in this. I don't know why they did that, like, see a pink towel... And what's the picture of the people? Like, what the hell? And they called the, the see in Japan the wizard people were called um, mystics, and for some reason they call mutants in these. And what the, what the hell is up with that? It's like we afraid of religion, <gasps> probably still at the time. Um, this is uh, my only book for my original Game Boy to survive and. Be honest, uh, it's not a bad one, the album. Um, I like Saga 1, Romancing Saga 2, and uh, Saga Frontier 1. Um, War Centuries, I hate, uh, what was it, uh, Unlimited Saga on the PS2? Ooh. Oh boy, that's... That's a whole different mess, though. I mean, I, I appreciate some of the ideas they did, but... Oh, I couldn't get that. So, anyway, let's go move on to some boxes. Um, Magical Vacation, the first one. Um, you might not actually know that that Magical Vacation game on DS is actually a sequel to this, which never came to America. Um, might as well show the back. Bye bye. Yeah, and when Japan had DS and Game Boy and all that, it had a weird uh, thing there. I think some American. Let's see. Let's. Yeah. Anyway. Um, my only box game video game, which is Japanese, obviously. As we know, Americans can't take care of shit. Uh, we have. Wait. Wait. Wave it. Act. Oh, I've never been able to pronounce it. I know the anime and that, uh, but uh, this is an RPG, and I believe this is what the Sega CD one was basically based off of. 
it, it's um, it's pretty nice. I, it, I don't know what American Game Gear boxes look like. Uh, that's another thing I've never seen before. Uh, Pokemon Ruby, Metroid Zero Mission. Now, um, I believe this is Tales of Summoner, if I remember correctly. It's a tactics game crossover with Tales characters. And, uh, we got the sequel on the PSP, which was shocking. And if I remember correctly, these ones were called Tales of World, which is a normal Tales RPG that's a giant crossover with Tales characters. I have one, uh, no, two and three. One's on the Game Boy Color, and I have not gotten that yet. But it's something I need to get. Oh, that stupid video in my background. Yeah. Why do Windows computers keep getting worse and worse? I mean, my Windows 98 was worked just fine. Vista just is crappy. Anyway, um, Herobots, which is kind of like that. Um, uh, it like has a. I I don't know. <laughs> This is for the original Wonder Swan, which was black and white. Um, it's an RPG, and it has a lot of crossover robots in it, from Gundam and other stuff I'm not even sure of. Um, I never played it, so I can't really say too much about it. Um, something I have played, Clock Tower for the Wonder Swan. I saw this, and I thought it'd be a little more interesting though than the... Um, Super Nintendo version, which is kind of debatable. Um, it is a pretty good port of the game. However, it is in black and white, so if color is a deal breaker for you, well, that's a deal breaker. Uh, the game that was in my Wonder Swan when I showed you, Wild Card, which is a Squaresoft game, by the way, is a color. Um, I cannot play this because there's a lot of text, and it, the combat revolves around cards. It's pretty interesting, but sadly, um, there were no guides on it last time I ever looked, so I don't know if I'll ever get to play it. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho Torment Tactics. Ugh. It works, but it is a lot of freaking boredom. Uh, Boktai 2, Soul Boy Jidango. So enhanced gameplay. Ooh. And I hate that horrible stick on top. Yeah, stickles. At least they actually came with a box. That's a miracle on its own. Um, I did get the original Boktai, and I uh, got the, the sequel used. And I, I really like Boktai. It's a very interesting series. And it, no, <laughs> it just pisses me off we didn't get the third entry. We didn't get the third one. That had more cycles. Instead, we got a shitty DS game that's up there on a shelf. That was designed for Americans. At least, uh, last time I went. Uh, here's another, uh, Neo Geo Pocket case, uh, a box. Um, as you can see, it's Evolution. If you ever play Dreamcast RPGs, you surely have heard of this title. This is the third entry, and I do not know if it takes place before, after, or between, or whatever. Well, has to take place after the first one, because the little goal they find is with them, but, um... I don't know any of the story, but, uh... It potentially plays the same way, just in a 2D way. But what's interesting, see, is it opens up like a booklet, you have the case. I do not know what this slot is for. I have no idea. And, um... You can open these up and have the booklet in that. It's pretty nice. Now, you're probably like, eh, it's a cheap cardboard box. Well, you think these are. <laughs> Which, anyway, um, y Yaguda Union will never fight alone. Uh, pretty bizarre game. Uh, I liked it, though. Um, I believe it has two remakes now. Both on the PSP, I think. Or just one at least. I know there was a version of it on the PSP. 
And also, a uh, tip, if you want a free version of that, get Knights of Nightmail. And you can get a free digital copy of that, if if you don't mind digital. Um, since it was free, it's not a big loss. And I own a physical copy of the game, so... Yeah. Now, um, this is a pretty beat up Boss Sigma Star Saga. Um, this was a very interesting game. Um, it's an RPG side... It, like... It has two gameplay con uh, gameplay concepts. It uh, plays kind of like a top right, a top top right view of like Zelda, Secret Man, and stuff. You use a gun, and I think you also get a melee move. And randomly, you enter schmuck uh, schmuck like levels, which are side scrolling. You know, you like your ship, and it's like view 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 rocks. You know, or up and down that, but it's it's sideways, and um. It, it's really weird concept, but um, I I think um, I really think that's a interesting selling point for it. Uh, if you want a really different RPG, um, and you like schmuck games, shooter game, little ship shooter games where you go from one side shooting stuff coming in and that with RPG stuff, um, you should you should try look this up. Um, it is a very bizarre RPG like that. Um, my only Game Boy Color box, and hey, guess what? It's from Japan. Surprised yet? <laughs> um, Star Ocean Blue Sphere, which is a spin off of Star Ocean 2's cast. And you get all of them, I believe, in it. And uh, I find it interesting, you probably can't see, see that little hand icon right there? It says no resale. <laughs> We sell is not illegal in Japan. You can sell uh, stuff again. But it also mentions down here, and it's in English, that commercial retail is prohibited. Which would be actually true, because winter, winting isn't legal in Japan as far as I'm aware of. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of weird they slap no we sell on there. You usually don't see that on stuff. Unless it was like, um, like, you can find copies of Sonic 2 that say no we sell on it, because they were, um, those were copies that came with the Sega Genesis. Um, and here's the third, uh, Neo Geo Pocket case t game I have. Um, I don't think I really need to explain the title, do I? But, um, look at this case. I, I got solely on this case. Um, the booklet fits in the side there, has a, well, crap, and case that's in this weird kind of thing here. It has its own case in that. It, it's pretty strange. Also, in case you're wondering, the G Neo Geo Pocket is region free. You don't need a Japanese Neo Geo Pocket to play Japanese or American. Oh, I mean, you know, you can play whatever the freaking region on Neo Geo Pocket. They're all the damn same. Um, Wonder Swan's only in Japan, so that's not even a problem to begin with. Uh, Seven Nights, Swordcraft Story 2. Um, Seven Nights actually, uh, pretty, uh, started on the PS1 in Japan, I believe, uh, but, um, I'm pretty sure the Swordcraft Story games were the first entries in America, I think. So, um, they're kind of like Tales, the gameplay in these are like Tales, but Summer Night is actually a tactics game, so these were spin-offs of the main series. And, uh, I beat the first one, we're gonna see that in a bit, but, um, it's number two. I haven't beaten that one. Uh, oh, ah, ah, stuff falling down. Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition, Stairway to the Destined Duel, which I believe was uh, based around the events of the first really big city tournament thing. Came with uh, some cards. And, um, what was this, like, uh, there was a year number or something on this, wasn't there? Yeah. I can't number. It was supposed to, if I remember correctly, this is supposed to be compatible link-wise to any, any version of the game. Like, if you connect it with a Japanese player, I think that was one of the selling points. I can't really remember. Um, interesting idea, but I highly doubt a lot of people made use of it. Fire Emblem! Forgot the subtitle for the Japanese version, because this is like, what, the seventh game in the series or something? <laughs> um, the American version doesn't have subtitles, they just call it Fire Emblem, like, what the hell.
There is an English patch for this game, so um, it can be played in English now. So, Jack Brothers in its box. It's the Japanese version. Anyone shocked yet? Anyone? No. Oh, good. Yes, Jack Brothers. If you know anything about this game in America, it is very freaking expensive to get the American version. This only costs fifteen dollars. The American cartridge usually costs like a hundred or something the last time I have saw. So I think I got away with a pretty good deal. Especially when you don't need English to play the game. Tales of Fanta Fantasia. Um, ghost classic. Um, the American version of GBA has the greatest and most horrible one able spell check problem I ever saw. Um, I think it was an NPC saying one of the cities called Kangaroo. <laughs> and it was a porn city, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, but it's pretty faithful. There's only two problems with the American version. What I just said, well, there's also the music box was removed. I did play the Japanese copy of the game before. It, it had a music box option and that was removed from ours. Boohoo. But even worse, I mean, I, that ain't a too biggie, but what's really bad is they removed the opening song that was one of the really famous points that the original Super Nintendo game did. And the Japanese version has this. Why was it changed in this? Screw you. Namco or Nintendo or whoever's stupid as decision that was. Um, here's some more booklets here. Yeah. Grand Tafado, Lufia, The Legend with Torns, and Golden Sun, The Lost Age. Oh boy. Still think we're going? Yep, we're still going. We got some more crap here. Yeah. Oh boy. Ooh. Okay. Legend Zelda Link to the Past. Got this for the Four Swords. Because, as you saw on my Super Nintendo, I played, I beaten, I conquered, and I loved this game for my entire life since I ever played it as a child on the Super Nintendo. I only got for that, and again, like I said, my Zelda concert century thing, that's probably pretty sad considering the game is really incredibly short. Um, yeah. Now we got uh, Summon Swordcraft 1, which has a pretty nice uh, cover compared to 2 in my opinion. Um, again, and just like the sequel there, it plays like uh, Tales. Um, I'd be in this one, and it's a pretty interesting... Uh, it, it's okay, I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the Italian universe. Mother 3. I mean, really. Mother is so known in Japan... They didn't even have to put a freaking cup. What's I kind of want is, uh, if I know quickly, the original mother was sold like this in a red box with uh, barely anything on it. I mean, look, the only thing you get to see is one image. <laughs> Just one image. Mother is this popular in Japan. It doesn't even need the bottle to try to advertise it. It advertises itself. <laughs> Kingdom of Hearts Chain of Memories. Um, the only Kingdom of Hearts game after the first one that I don't completely hate. Um, it is different, but it's a spin-off game, and that's what spin-off games are supposed to. Um, I don't hate Kingdom Hearts 2, but it solely isn't up to my expectations of what I was expecting for it. Uh, Gunstar Heroes Super, or Gunstar Super Heroes, or there's so many different interpreted ways of this it's bizarre and there was a transgender problem with the male the main character. I can't remember if he's supposed to be female or male. Um he's he she is one in Japan and is another in America, so I don't particularly remember what 
was in America. This is basically... It's supposed to be a sequel, but it's very reminiscent of the original Gunstar Heroes game. So, some people call it a remake, while other people call it a sequel. Because its story is technically um, being sequelized of the events of the first one, but um, many of the stages and everything are very reminiscent of the original one. So, uh, take that uh, take that how you take it. Uh, Golden Sun, do it, does it really need an entry? I mean, some people said one of the greatest RPGs ever. I wouldn't say the greatest RPG ever, but certainly a great RPG. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. If you're hoping I'm going to say something good about this, then you're probably solely wrong. Um, I'm very bitter towards the Advance series of tac- Um I really liked it, the mature story of Final Fantasy Tactics on the PS1. It's um, really endeavored, church-themed um, scandal. I really liked it, that. Uh, that was like probably one of the first really mature kind of storylines I ever got to experience as a gamer. And some people might think that's kind of silly. That I don't know, but um, you know, no one can deny that Final Fantasy Tactics Advance series is completely childish, though. And uh, Dragon Quest Monsters 2: Kobe's Journey, which uh, Kobe's Journey is one version, and um, I can't remember his sister's name. Uh, let's see, uh, Taylor's Adventure, and this was Dragon Quest's. Uh, Attempt at Pokemon with the two versions, and no, this is compatible with Game Boy Advance. Uh, yeah, sadly, probably a lot of people didn't buy that. Um, Dragon Ball Z, the Legacy of Goku. Good lord. Oh, what the hell. This thing is. It's kind of controls like Zelda. Like in a top right view thing, but it's horrible. It has an RPG mechanic, and then it then it just goes downhill with all the uh, it uh, bosses are horrible. And it, oh, I I would have to write a script to make a can hear it way of all the problems with this game. It it's just dreadful, dreadful. It's oh. Advance Wars Two. Black Hole Rising. Sweet. This was my first Advance Wars, and it was really good. Really good. I mean, so good. Awesome good. Really, really, really good. Um, I really, I really did enjoy it. And, um, now, We got more, more little, little stuff. Royal Land, Super Mario Land 3. I never got those. Those were very confusing. Pokemon trading card game. Gargoyles. Or what should be called Gargoyles Quest. Amazing Penguin. Tetris. Eh, I don't want to hear it. I know someone's going to ask it. Mill Slug. Forced Mission. Operation C, which is a Contra game. Fatal Fury. The Last... Yeah, last Blade, which is a fine game with a bunch of Samurai Ninja people. Streets of Age 2 on the Game Gear. Castlevania 2, Belmont Revenge. Ugh. Kid Dracula. Yay! Get this game. It's fun. Pokemon Gold. <gasps> Sparkly. It'd be gold in that ye cartridge. Dragon Quest 3, which is my favorite. Pokemon Pinball. Look this cartridge I probably have seen for the Game Boy before. Eh, 
built-in Wumble. Interesting idea. Very odd. And sadly, it doesn't fit in any case because of it. Castlevania Legends. Pretty pricey one. I think it usually goes anywhere between um, $20, $30, sometimes a little higher even now. Um, the match of the millennium. Great greed, but just a very bizarre solo like RPG like Dragon Quest 1. Sort of Man remake of Final Fantasy Adventure, which was the first mana game. And this one's a pretty mixed bag. It is basically the same story being uh, told in a better way, because obviously, you know, the Game Boy, the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance have much big difference in how they could narratively tell the story and prove on it. But then at the same time, to me, something felt wrong in this game. And I definitely enjoy a lot of the music built in Final Fantasy Adventure. Call me crazy. Final Fantasy Legend, which is Saga 1, as I had always said before. Semi Showdown 2. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which is probably my favorite handheld Zelda game. It took me a long time to beat it though, because I had to replay it because there's a glitch in like near the last dungeon, which sucks. Was Evil Gaiden. Oh, deal. Oh, I did beat this game, and it is quite horrible. It is quite dis dis. I don't even know how to describe this horrible piece of crap. Kobe's Dreamland 2. Crown Royal 1 2. The Castlevania Avenger. Yep. Power getting too big. Dragon Quest, Simon Mino, something like that. This is basically uh, the oh crap, what was the DS game? Um, the Slime spin-off game on the DS. This is this is the first one. Um, you don't need to know English. Uh, you don't need <laughs> you don't need to know Japanese to play this game if you're English speaking or any speaking language. Um, I play it just fine in Japanese. There's only one thing that's a little tricky where you have to find an NPC hiding. Um, but aside from that, it, it's pretty much uh, completely playable to someone who doesn't know the language. Uh, we'll see. Wansom. Um, kind of a mixed bag, actually. Um, save system's a little weird. It has a lot of side secondary characters, which, um, makes the saving system really weird. But, uh, it's a functional game of it. It's not bad. The only thing, it's just to go off. Uh, Kesmir, our, our Year of Sorrow. Yo, Pokemon Yellow. Pokemon Red. Donkey Kong. Kesmir, the Circle of the Moon, which is kind of an odd, odd entry in Kesmir series, because, um, isn't part of the main series' storyline. It's basically its own universe. Uh, Birth of Fire 2. And then we, of course, have Advance Wars 1! <laughs> Mbaktai 1. Uh, the sun is in your hand. How could I forget that? I used to say it all the time. Um, this is basically uh, what the cartridge for the second one looks like. Uh, the top is the solar sensor. And, um... Or was it that? That little black spot right there is the solar sensor, because when you put in your vents, uh, that's what's going to be facing upward. Um, but that stuff has to do with it, too. Um, very interesting idea, you know. Um, if you're not familiar with the series, uh, let me explain it now. Um, basically, um, the game uses soul light, which means you have to either play by a bulb that emits actual soul rays like the sun, or the actual sun itself, encouraging you to go outside. Yeah, it's one of those type of ideas, but this is a good game. Uh, it's very Metal Gear-ish, actually, ironically, because it's by Hiro Kojima. Any game by Hiro Kojima seems to be awesome. 
<laughs> Shut up, Hades. But don't think I think. I'm not saying he can't do Wong. Everyone does Wong. But then saying ideas are ideas. And I can't pronounce. So, uh, that's basically all of the games for all those systems. Um, all together, really big. Uh, when separated, uh, obviously the Game Boy remains really big. But, um, aside from my Neo Geo Pocket, uh, everything else gets pretty small without being with all this other stuff. I mean, essentially, when you look at it, um, I have three Game Gear times. Now, um, about that, actually, um, my Game Gear I have right now and the games I have are not my original stuff. They were all bought, we bought, well, yeah. Two of them were we bought and obviously the Japanese one I imported, um, and, um, Basically, I got rid of my Game Gear because I didn't have anything. I still don't have anything to play on it. Um, though, this really is. It's a pretty iffy system to find stuff for. But, um. I had. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I had Sonic 2. Um, I had Wen and Stimpy, and, oh, that was horrible. And basically, um, I traded it off. For um, some other crap, because there was like some Super Nintendo stuff, so I was like, oh, uh, sure, yeah. Because uh, the kid liked it, because, uh, you know, shiny graphics and that. <laughs> um, yeah, don't let shiny graphics fool you kids. It's the gameplay. The gameplay. But anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing my time collection of handheld stuff that isn't the DS or PSB, which will have their own entries because they have enough to be by themselves. I just figured I'd launch all this stuff in together since some of them I barely have like three, four games for a few of the systems. But definitely Neo Geo Pocket is uh, my second one up for decent number of games compared to the Wondrous One or the Game Gear. Anyway, uh, this is probably really long by this point, so, uh, I'll see you next time, and hopefully, um, hopefully, uh, I'll get another thing done sometime. Uh, peace out, folks.